Welcome back to Calculus 4.2. We're going to do another example. Uh, this is going to be a little more challenging than the trapezoid one we did. Uh, this one's going to have uh, a few things happen that we probably wouldn't want to happen. Um, so we are going to find the area on this one under as an f at x curve uh, equals f x squared plus 1. I'm going to find the area from 1 to 3. And since the left bound is not 0, this is going to cause some complications that are worth probably looking into. Well, the first thing we do in problems like this is we go ahead and find delta x, which is b minus a over n. So that is not so bad. That's 2 over n. And then we find the CI. I like to get this out of the way. And this is going to be the, tr the interesting part. It's, gonna, it's A plus um, I times delta X. And now we don't have 0 plus. So this now is a binomial. Which means if you're going to square this or cube this, this is going to cause create uh, multiple terms. And that's what's going to happen. Fortunately, we're only squaring it. So let's... Um, Set the, well, I guess I could set it up right here. Get at least the setup done. So the setup's going to be, as always, the limit as x approaches, as n approaches infinity, not delta x, um, uh, of the summation, I think i go from 1 to n. And the width here is delta x, or 2 over n, times the function evaluated at this CI value. So there's our setup. And we just got to simplify this. It's going to get down to a nice rational number we'll see in the next slide. One of the next slides. Alright, let's switch off that green to something a little nicer. Um, so the thing I typically do first is I, once we get our limit down, I bring that 2 over n out in front of the um, summation because it doesn't have any i's and so it may pass without any issues. Uh, so what is f at 1 plus the quantity 1 plus 2i over n? Well it's going to be 1 plus 2i over n quantity squared plus 1. Um, so we're going to have to foil that binomial, and I'm going to let you check me on this if you like. Uh, so when you foil that, you're going to end up with 1 plus 4i over n, that's the outside inside sum, plus 4i squared over n squared plus 1. Um, and let's see, what do we do next? Okay, um, you know what, I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, take the summation of each uh, term level separately. So let's put a big bracket here. So the first one is this one. That's the squared one. Let's put it up front. So we'll have 4 over n squared. Um, times the summation of i squared. Uh, and we have i equals 1 to n here. So what I did, hopefully this isn't too much, but I'm going to take the summation of each piece separately, that piece, this piece, and then the constant, which is going to become 2. So I'm doing this one first, because the highest agreed, and I'll do this one second. And I'll do this one third, which is the constant, it's just going to be the 3, I mean the 2. So what I do is I pull the 4 over n squared out here because they don't have any i's in them. So there's nothing holding them back from coming out front. Uh, okay, uh, then the second term here, and I'll change colors, it's going to be 4 over n and only the i remains. So I like to get everybody out of there except the i, the i squared, the i cubed, or 
If it's just a constant, I usually leave it all in there, like in this one. I'll leave the whole 2 in here. Again, the 2 comes from the fact that you had 1 and 1. Okay, now uh, we've got to copy this. Sorry about the bad handwriting. And now you say, what is the sum as i goes from 1 to n of i squared? Well, we've got a formula for that. And it is, luckily I have it here in front of me, n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. That will be provided to you. Plus 4 over n times n uh, times the what is the summation as i goes from 1 to n of just i. Well, it's just n times n plus 1 over 2. And then finally, what is the summation as i goes from 1 to n of 2? It is 2n. Okay, I did this one in a little bit different way. First thing I did is I looked at the denominators of these three terms. You see how there's three terms? Because really from here on, we're just doing some algebra. There's a term. Here's a term. Here's a term. What's the common denominator? Um, or what's the biggest denominator? Well, the first thing here, denominator is 6n squared. This one is 2n. This one is just 1. So if I could cancel something in the big one to make it, I will. So I'm going to cancel the n's. That makes the denominator 6n. I could cancel it down to these 4 and the 6, but it would become 3, and that's not really helping me. So I, I kind of think I'm just going to go with a 6n common denominator. And this is really going to save us some time. So let's see. How about pink? So what I'll do is this one is already 6n, right? Uh, let's do a different color. Yellow. This one is already 6n. So this to get this one to be 6n, I need to multiply this by top and bottom by just 3, right? That will do it. And this one actually has to be top and bottom by 6n. And I'll have my common denominator out of the way. So a limit. And we will not get this done on this page. 2 over n. So if I, this is just, actually it's all 6n at this point, isn't it? Let's just leave it there. So what does all of this first term become? Well, it becomes, I'm not going to try to do too much at once, 4 times, I'm going to square this right here, 2n squared plus 2n plus n, 3n plus 1. The next part here, uh, I'm no reason to rush myself here. 12n times n plus 1, right? 12 right there, n times n plus 1. And last term is going to be 12n squared. Whoa, that's long. Okay, let me see if my note looks similar. Because I'm going to have to go to the next page. Okay, I see where to pick up. Okay, so we are really getting close. This is going to collapse down nicely here in just a second. The area is now at the limit as n approaches infinity, 2 over n, times, if you distribute through that 4 in the first term, you're going to have 8n squared plus 12n plus 4. This is all, by the way, over 6n. Next term, distribute the 12n. <laughs> You're going to have 12n squared plus 12n. And lastly, we already had 12n squared. Okay, so what do we got in terms of light terms? We have 8n squared, 12n squared, 12n squared. Those add to become... i to write all this. You know what, I'm going to do something here. I did kind of on that last problem. That 2n that's been hanging there, let's put 2 out here. And let's push the n through. So now we're going to have 6n squared, which is good because we have the 8n squared, 12n squared, 12n squared, and those will add to the other 12n squared. Those will add to 24, 32n squared. Then we have the 12n and 12n. Those add to become 
24 in, and finally we just have that loan for. Okay, we can actually evaluate this limit, right? Because this thing here, um, highest degree term, highest degree term, those are relatively insignificant, so as n approaches infinity, the thing in the parentheses is going to approach 32 over 6. We got this 2 out here, we'll let it go with that. And we finally end up with the area is 32 over 3. You know, I didn't even make a sketch of this thing. You don't really have to, but let's do it real quick to see what we're working with. We found the area under uh, f at x, ah, it's not very good, x squared plus 1 from 1 to 3. And the 2's there. So we're finding that area. Um, and we found it to be 32 over 3, which is like 10.6 repeating. Um, so, looks good. Hopefully that makes sense. They won't get much uh, messier than that. Um, hang in there. See you next time.